Howdy, AP Prika. It is Miss Kosh. In today's video, I want to um, do the foundation of transformations. I expect that by the time my by the time my students have gotten to me, that they're actually pretty good at transformations. I just want to make sure we know the language that AP Prika is going to use. Um, and so I'm doing it on my iPad because this one piece of paper would is very small so I can zoom in um, okay so we're looking we've got two additive transformations we could do um, where the function G is equal to f of X plus K um, and so with f of X here's the verbal description the F of, um, and I pulled this straight from AP Prigel um, okay the function G of X equals f of X plus K is an additive transformation of a function F that results in a vertical translation of the graph by k units okay so it's a it's a vertical translation it's a shift up and down that we're talking about um, then we could have um, another additive trans, uh, transformation and that's when we do f of x plus h and this is the language they use the function g of x equals f of x plus h is an additive transformation of the function f that results in a horizontal uh, there we go, kind of fit. Translation of the graph by, okay, and since this is a plus H, we always, H does, kind of, or, um, when it's there with X, it does the opposite of what you would expect. So it's gonna be a translation by negative H. Um, often we may have seen, or when we were teaching in the past, we were teaching um, a vertex form of a, of a quadratic, okay, x minus h squared plus k, we would write the equation this way, and so where is the vertex? Um, the vertex is h, k. All right, well, this is just saying, and, and they did this, we noticed when, when later this, um, in this year when we get to trig, you're going to see that we also, um, the, the notation that AP Precal used was kind of surprised us at our AP Summer Institute, because we're like, wait, why wouldn't you do minus h instead of plus h? But whatever. <laughs> um, I was like, well, okay, we're fine. Um, we're just going to move the graph um, the opposite of what that value is. If it's if it's a minus sign, you're moving it to the right H. If it's a plus sign, you're moving it to the left H, assuming that H was positive, but okay, whatever. Um, the next, we have two multiplicative transformations. Um, and in both of these, I should have written in this, like this A minus, A can't equal zero shows up here, um, but and this B can't equal zero shows up there, but I was too lit. Well, I'm, I wanted it to fit in the page <laughs> and I ran out of space. Okay, so a can't equal zero. Um, the function g of x equals a times f of x is a multiplicative transformation of the function f that results in a vertical dilation. They use, this is not um, something that's, that I typically say. I would have always said a stretch or compression, um, but AP Precal uses the word dilation. And so sometimes we would get confused by what's a stretch and what's the compression, and is it a compression by, um, by a, a bigger number? Does that make it get more narrow? Anyway, we just got confused. So let's try and just stick with the language dilation. Um, so it's a vertical dilation by a factor of A. So when it's, um, when it's multiplying our y value, um, like, okay, so what we'd have here, if I have, if I say f of 1 is equal to 4, then 2 times f of 1 would be equal to 2 times 4, which is 8. And so that is a, um, a vertical dilation by a factor of, of that 2. Okay, so notice what I did is I multiplied, I multiplied my y value by 2. Okay, coming over here, the, um, if I have f of bx, um, then this is the function g of x equals f of bx is a multiplicative transformation of the function f that results in a horizontal, oh, it doesn't fit, dilation of the graph by a factor of, oh, you know what, I messed up, I forgot, um, this is the absolute value of 1 over b, and this is the absolute value of a. Okay, um, so it's always going to, so if this had been back over here, if I'd had a negative 2, um, this is now, the point has now become um, uh, negative 8, or the y value is now negative 8, but it was still a, um, a vertical dilation by 2. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, coming, continuing on, when um, a is less than 0, we have a reflection. If my y values are changing, it's going to give us um, 
a reflection over the x-axis, a reflection over the x-axis. And when b is less than zero, we have a reflection over um, the y-axis. Okay, so b will change our domain, a will change our range. Can I say that confidently? Yes. B affects the, the x values, and so it could change the domain of our graph, which is why, in just a second, we're going to do these examples, um, and we're going to practice coming up with the domain and range for each of them. So I started with some random, I was having fun graphing. Yes, I did half a circle. Okay, a little semicircle there. Let's, um, let's label some of these points. This is negative 2, 0. Here I see 0, 2. This one is 2, 0. Then there's a little line that goes to 4, 4, I think. Then it was cruising along until 6, 4. This, having it here on this graph might help us in a second. Um, and then it was a line coming down to 14, 0. Um, okay, so the verbal description, oh, we don't need anything here um, because that doesn't have any transformations. This is our original function. Um, the domain of this guy goes from negative 2 to 14. The range went as low as 0 and as high as 4. I just wanted to do something uh, kind of weird but easy enough for me to create in Desmos, so I did. Okay, so now this next one, they're saying f of x, I lied, they're saying g of x is equal to f of x minus 3. So I'm going to take any of my values. Um, if I were to do, when I worked my answer key for the practice, all I did is I said, okay, we now have negative 2, negative 3, which is here. We now have, um, instead of 0, 2, we now have 0, negative 1. And then I had a positive 2, 3 also was the other half of that semicircle. And then I'd have 4, I'm going down 3, so 4, 1. Um, and then I had a 6, 4. And then I had 14, negative 3. 14, I think this is a negative 3. And so this was a semicircle. This was a straight line, pretend I can draw. This is a straight line and this is a straight line. There's a way to let my, my the iPad make lines straight, but it always frustrates me when it does. <laughs> so my students are better at making things look good than I am. All right, so this is still, notice here on this one, my domain did not change, um, but my range went down three. So we're now from negative three was as low as we went, and the highest we went was positive one. Um, and so let's use the um, the AP language. So we had a vertical translation, um, vertical translation down three. That works for me. I don't know. Um, this will show up in multiple choice, so you just have to understand the language that they're using. But sometimes they write multiple choice questions. You're like, seriously, why did you make this so complicated? Okay, um, oh, I was gonna say this. One thing that you could do, if we wanted to find g of, say, negative two, g of negative two would be f of negative two minus three. So I can always plug in a value here and say, well, what is this? Okay, so f of negative two was back over um, in that first graph, f of negative 2 was 0. 0 minus 3 gave us negative 3. So what did I have? I found that this value here became this value here, and I can do that um, with the equation if I feel so inclined. Okay, um, let me get rid of that because this may be the notes that I post. Uh, okay, let's look at the next one. So now we're doing a, a horizontal translation. Um, and so with this one, we are moving, I should have written this first, this is a horizontal, that's not an H, horizontal translation. What did we do? We are actually, we're not moving to the right, we're actually moving to the left, two. Okay, so we're going negative, so that's to the left. Um, and so whatever I had before now has to shift to the left too. So if I do this by hand, I think, I think initially, didn't we have this? Okay, well, here, watch this. Um, ooh, there it goes. Okay, well, anyway, y'all, that's terrible. Okay, but whatever. So we took negative, what was at negative two is now at negative four. What was at positive two is now at zero. Um, and then I can go, so I'll get to, I'm at two, four. Then I stay there till four. And then instead of 16, or 14, instead of being at right, wasn't I at 14? Yes, 
14 minus 2 is 12, so then we come back down here like this. And so here was a, a straight line, a straight line, and a straight line. Pretend I can draw. Okay, um, so what's my domain? My domain has changed. It's now negative 4 to 12, and my range is still the same. So um, comparing, comparing this and this from the original to the new, um, I now have, I have, I have a different domain, but the same range. Okay, let's use um, what I would do. Remember how a second ago I looked at a, um, that little equation right here? Where did it go? There it is. And um, let's do something similar here. What I would do on this one is because our, our function is not defined everywhere, okay? F is only living, the original F is only living between negative 2 and 14. So what I might say is, okay, what do I need? Um, well, how do I want to say this to you? I can only have this world right here has to be negative 2 to 14. So if I said x plus 2, the smallest it can be is negative 2, that means the smallest x for my g value would be negative 4. Okay, um, I don't know that I want that in my notes, but um, oh, I forgot that it turns off the eraser when you pick up your pencil. I guess that's a good feature. Um, okay, so my point was, I want g of negative 4 would be equal to f of negative 4 plus 2. Well, negative 4 plus 2 is f of negative 2. f of negative 2, we look back to the graph, f of negative 2 was 0. And so now we know that we have the point uh, negative 4, 0, which showed up right there. Super. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. I, I think that the equation here you may not need because the shifts up and down or the vertical translations up and down are kind of obvious, um, but it gets a little bit more complicated when you're changing the Y values. Um, okay, did I answer the rest of that? I did. So now, um, I don't know if this fits on the graph. I think some of the practice that I wrote my kids, um, I, I tried to keep the same grid, but then that is tricky when you have um, uh, dilations. Anyway, okay, so let's see. So on this one, I can take, um, well, here's what I notice. I have a negative, which tells me I'm going to have a reflection. Uh, so it's a reflection, reflect over the x-axis. And then I'm going to have a, a vertical dilation. Let's practice using that language. Maybe that's already your practice, but it's not my practice, so I'm working on it. A vertical dilation of 2. So, Or the other thing that I could think about is that when I have... Um, when I have, like, if I want g of 0 would be equal to, you know what, let me switch colors. Okay, uh, green, super. Okay. g of 0 would be equal to negative 2 times f of 0. I picked 0 because it wasn't, um, I didn't pick negative 2 again because when you multiply 0 times negative 2, nothing really changes, but this was a positive 2. Okay. Um, I did that on purpose. This is negative 2 times a positive 2 because f of 0 was 2. So this is negative 4. So g of 0 is going to be negative 4. So that's down here. So the, the zeros that I had back in my original graph at negative 2, 2, and 14, multiply that by negative 2 and nothing happens. So it's still 0 and 14. Okay. So then we're going to look at, well, so this would be that nice... The circle kind of got stretched out. It's a little more elliptical. Um, and then what happens next? Then we would go from, um, I want 4, 4. But now that, so we could, this might be helpful. We could say g of 4 would be equal to negative 2 times f of 4. f of 4 was 4, so this is negative 8. Um, there we go. Here's negative 8. Wait, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we want 4, negative 8 is down here somewhere. We stayed there until 6, right? Yes. And then we cruise, and then we then we just get our find our way back to... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Pretend these are straight lines. That's terrible, but whatever. You get the idea. Okay. Um, what's my domain? Did the domain change? No. It, um, we didn't affect our x values, we were just affecting our, we were just um, doing things to our y values, and so this is negative 2 to 14 still. Um, and what's my range? Well, my range is now, I went as low as negative 8, and, um, and then as high as 0. So when I compare these right here, 
um, I'm multiplying both of those numbers by number by negative two, which then switches kind of the order that I have them in because of the positive and the negative. Anyway, okay. Um, let's look at the last one. On this one, this is going to be this two right in here. This gives us a um, a horizontal uh, dilation. Let's practice that word dilation by a factor of and then we do one over b so by a di by dilation by a factor of one half okay these i think are so everything kind of um comes closer to the y-axis another way to think about this is what what was the very first point that i cared about the first point i cared about was um negative two right here well what would x have to equal if i want f of negative two it would have to equal negative one okay so my point is um, that g of negative 1 would equal f of 2 times negative 1, which would equal f of negative 2, which would equal, that was at point 0. So now I am at negative 1, 0. What happens when I'm at 0? Well, g of 0 is going to equal f of 2 times 0, which is also just 0. So nothing changes there. I don't want this clutter in my life. Um, okay, so I'm at 0, 2, then I've come here, so what had been, do, 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 where'd it go, 2, half of 2 is 1, half of 4 is going to be 2, so we're going to get to, um, at 2, we're up to 4, we stay there, half of 6, remember how we stayed, we, was there, we were there from 4 to 6, now we're there from 2 to 3, um, and then, let's see, let's look again, um, 14, half of that is 7. So we make it back down to the axis. Here we are. I'm sorry if I made you dizzy. Um, and here we go. So this kind of goes like, oh, well, that, let's try again. This kind of is curved. This should be a straight line. This should be a straight line. And this, nope, that looks terrible. This, well, better. Okay, I've done worse. Um, and there we go. And this is this is our function. Um, with those transform with with that um, horizontal dilation by a factor of one half. So my my it did change my domain. So my domain is now negative one to seven, but it, that's a hard bracket. But it did not change my range, which is still zero to four. Okay, so hopefully that was mostly a review for you. I think probably the only thing that's not a review um, would be some of the language that they use. But I think I think we should be good. All right, well, like, subscribe, comment, do all the things, and go practice. Good luck to you.